New Age deception number seven, moving on to slide number 88 now. A false notion of forgiveness. Forgive people even if they are not sorry for what they have done. And people think that forgiveness only operates in the person who's offering forgiveness. And this is a false notion of forgiveness. This is not how real forgiveness works. I'll explain what real forgiveness really is. And I'm all for forgiveness. I am all for real, true forgiveness. I'm not for the fake, new age, wishy-washy, nonsense version of forgiveness, which has nothing to do with forgiveness. It has to do with being a naive person, which again is what right brain imbalance will make you into. Slide number 89, I put what the false notion of forgiveness will get you more of. Turning the other cheek is what people look at as true forgiveness. Uh, and uh, uh, the little um, subtitle there says it helps even out the scars. Because that's what continuing to turn the other cheek will get you. When the bully wants to hit you and you turn the other cheek, the bully's going to keep hitting you. You know, just get over the notion that this is somehow a virtue to turn the other cheek. It's not a virtue. It's total naivete. Again, there's things in the teachings of, you know, the New Testament that I wholeheartedly agree with, and there's things I think were totally added in there. And, you know, this is one of them. First of all, it's it's maybe it's not something that was added in there. It's it's totally misunderstood. It's misconstrued. It's mistranslated in its original context. It meant offer people other chances to do the right thing. But it doesn't mean if someone is doing violence to you, continue to allow them to do violence to you. That's not what it means. It's symbolic. It was metaphorical. If someone slaps you in the face because you're trying to give them the truth, continue to give them the, another chance to understand the truth. Keep speaking it to them. Uh, I do believe this was about the dynamics of people that you care about that are close to you around you. And it didn't mean just let a bully or an attacker continue to do whatever they're going to do to you. That's not what it meant. So this is the false notion of forgiveness. And what the false notion of forgiveness will get you if you keep practicing it is George Orwell's vision of a boot stamping on a human face forever. And this is what we're really moving into. Because we want to say, oh, these people, they're, you know, they're the authorities. Oh, they're, 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 it's just a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, it's just a, a few bad apples. And we got to give them a chance to get their stuff right, get it together. While they're killing people every day. Killing people with so-called non-lethal weapons. People's lives are being taken when they have, these people, these people are murderers. The thugs in the police force are murderers. Killing people. How many people have been killed with tasers? How many people have been, been killed or maimed with water cannons? To disgrace. This false notion of forgiveness is bullshit. Let's make the correction to this. Let's make the correction to the false notion of forgiveness and explain what true forgiveness really means. Because it's important. And true forgiveness should be practiced. True forgiveness does not mean continuing to excuse the willful commission of wrongdoing an infinite number of times. We're on slide 92 now. That is naivete at best and cooperation... <clears throat> with evil at worst. And you know what? I find it very interesting that the numbers would work out the way that they do. This is slide number 92. And slide number 93 is where I explain what true forgiveness really is. I mean, I didn't plan it that way, folks. That That's not, that's, you know, that's just how it worked out. I didn't deliberately say, I'm going to make slide number 92 this and slide number 93 this. That's just how it synchromystically worked out. For people who understand the numbers 92 and 93, 92 being the failure of will and higher consciousness and true love, and 93 being the expression of higher consciousness, true will, and love. Okay? So 92 is the failure of the true work. 93 is the accomplishment of the true work. 
And it's just amazing that things work out that way synchromystically. So 92, the false notion of forgiveness, is people think it means excusing the willful commission of wrongdoing an infinite number of times. That's not what true forgiveness is. What that really is, is naivete at the very best, and that comes from right brain imbalance, and cooperation with evil at worst. So what is really true forgiveness? On slide number 93, it's being able to admit those three words, I was wrong. That's where forgiveness has to start. Forgiveness has to start with somebody acknowledging their wrongdoing. It's a two-way street. Forget, contrary to what the New Age movement and other idiots will try to tell you, that forgiveness only operates in the person offering the forgiveness. You are wrong. Sorry, it does not work that way. That's not true forgiveness. There's a difference between release of what you may be holding, of anger that you may be holding on to, and forgiveness. Release from attachment to anger in your life over something that occurred and saying, I'm not going to be angry about that because it happened in the past. That's not simply forgiving somebody. True forgiveness is a two-way street. There has to be an interchange, for there to, an exchange for there to be forgiveness. Okay, so the change that happens is the, the person offers their apology and then you give them something. The apology has to come first. The person has to admit that they were wrong. A sincere apology starts with the willingness to tell the truth. The person is going to tell the truth that their action was wrong, that their action was violent, that their action was based in taking something from you that they had no right to take. hurting you, harming you in some way. And then they have to be willing to cease their engagement in that action. See, there has to be sincerity on the part of the person that did it. If, if true forgiveness is going to be offered and exchanged in their lifetime, they have to say, I was wrong, a, tr a sincere apology, I'm willing to admit the truth, and to stop doing what I was doing. That's where forgiveness and reconciliation begin. Until that's done, there can be no true forgiveness. There can be tr no true healing, no true reconciliation. Once someone says, I was wrong, I admit I shouldn't have been doing that and I won't do it anymore, I don't think you have to then take, you don't have to take defensive action against them. You have to give them a chance to prove that they were are sincere and that's what forgiveness is you're saying okay if you're willing to accept that responsibility I will not take any action I forgive you for what you've done don't do it again when a person doesn't do it again they've proven that the, the, the um, apology was sincere they continue to do it again then I think you understand that that's basically a person who's not it wasn't it wasn't a sincere apology, and the person is just going to continue to do the action because they don't have any real respect for themselves or anybody else. And then I think action should be taken against the person because they've proven that they're not sorry for what they're doing. I'm all for giving people other chances. I'm all for real forgiveness, but I'm not for a false notion of forgiveness. We need to understand the difference between those two concepts.